Hello there, my fellow proud citizens of the periphery, and welcome back to some more Battletech lore. We are getting quite involved by this point with the states of the infamous periphery, with two major and two minor powers already in the playlist. So, for today, I wanted to narrate to you something a bit different. The story of an infamous state which doesn't exist anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Rimworld's Republic. Now, since we already covered the Amaris Civil War in its own video, I am not gonna go over that period again. So this is gonna be an overview of this state's earlier period. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Once upon a time, at the edge of Lyran space, there existed a realm that would bring about the end of the seemingly invincible Star League. This realm was the Rimworld's Republic. The story begins in 2237, in the midst of the Outer Reaches Rebellion, when one Hector Worthington Rowe, an undergraduate student studying classics and history at the University of Thebes, Alexandria, volunteered to join Rainfield's 3rd Alexandrian Militia in an attempt to defend the school. Shortly afterwards, the Terran Alliance forces invaded the world of Alexandria, killing more than 3,000 people. Alliance forces would retreat off-world in 2238. At the end of that rebellion, Rowe started a student group in order to protest against the Great Alliance Devil. The group turned into militants, and in 2244 hijacked a flotilla of jump ships belonging to the Sky Freight and Goods Company. Rowe then arrived at an isolated Terran Alliance garrison world known as Lucianka, home to the 151st Altarian Fusiliers. Rowe and his guerrillas infiltrated the regiment, assassinated the commanding officers, and then staged a mock trial against the unit, invariably executing each and every soldier through torture. Rowe was forced to flee, however, when one of his hijacked jump ships escaped. All along the way, Rowe would raid small colonies and outposts, taking livestock, parts, food, and slaves. After six years on the run, he found a habitable planet beyond the Dark Nebula and founded the world called Apollo and the Rimworld's Republic itself on the 8th of September 2250. He also named himself as the first Consul of the Republic. Following that, he would rule for more than five decades until his son, Maxwell Achilles Rowe, would depose him of power and become First Consul in 2305. Rather than using great force, the Rimworld's Republic expanded by guile and seduction. When Maxwell Rowe discovered refugee colonies on his border in 2334, the Republic used trade agreements, as well as shared ventures to improve education and infrastructure, to ingratiate the Republic with its neighbors. The agreements didn't hold Republican colonization efforts though, and by 2338, the Republic had settled the worlds of Iker, Persistence, Winfield, Durf, Gotterdammerung, Lakhov, and Golandrinas. A chance hostile encounter with the Tamar Pact in 2339 turned the attentions of the Republic towards the Inner Sphere then. Realizing the very tenuous situation, Maxwell journeyed to the Tamar Pact to meet the leader, Kevin Tamar. These guys were relieved then to pen a non-aggression treaty and then the Republic was free to secure its future, under the rule of Maxwell's daughter, Arabella. Maxwell, in his turn, departed towards parts of the periphery and was never heard from again. Under the reign of Arabella, the Republic focused public efforts on education and infrastructure, especially in the aid of the Helot class. Arabella also realized that naval assets might induce panic in her neighbors, so she focused on building a strong defensive army. The reforms of Arabella did pay dividends. The Republic was transformed from a feudal barbarian state with Roman trappings into a nation with a surplus of skilled labor. During that period, the Republic also colonized more worlds as Barcelona, Black Earth, Beta 7, and Malibu. When Arabella died in 2376, she was succeeded by her son, Michael Edward Durant, also nicknamed Mishka. 
This guy was a boastful and gluttonous man, but he did understand the strengths of the nation and her weaknesses. He negotiated trade agreements with the Draconis Combine, the Terran Hegemony, the Lyran Commonwealth, and the Free Worlds League, trading labor for technology and recognition. He was succeeded by his sister Heather upon his death in 2400. Heather Durant maintained a careful policy of Republican neutrality, but did profiteer from the Lyran Curitan conflict in 2407. Although the Republic didn't back the Lyran Commonwealth, it did open its borders to agents on both sides. Establishing the Republican Intelligence Service, called the ASROC, the Republic increased its influence, territory, and military power via exchanges of information and special operatives. During an investigation of an attempted poisoning of the Director General Jacob Cameron in 2448, the Terran Hegemony Intelligence Operative Terran Samaris discovered a link between the plot and both Draconis Combine and Republican covert operatives. The husband of Terrence, one David Chi Wong, had just been promoted to ambassador to the Rimworld's Republic. So Terrence, her husband, and two children traveled to Apollo. There, Terrence met and befriended Heather Durant herself. The two women became lovers, and in 2459 she was designated heir apparent to the Rimworld's Republic. Terrence mothered more children to Ambassador Wang, and this was the start of the Amaris dynasty. In 2463, Heather passed away, making Terence Amaris the ruler of the Rimworld's Republic. The Amaris line did struggle with its dual identity. Gregory Amaris, the first consul of the Republic at the birth of the Star League, ruled the Republic as a hegemony protectorate. Republican citizen uprising in response to high taxes and foreign occupation would lead Gregory to impose martial law and issue the infamous Universal Act of Loyalty an oath that all citizens were obliged to take. The Rimworld's Republic then went into open revolt, requiring invasion by the Star League during the Reunification War in 2575. The arrogant leadership of Gregory Amaris came to an end via assassination in 2599. The assassins, a junta ran by Admiral Hakim Wibka, installed Richard Amaris as the new president. Seeding antagonism within the junta, Richard was then able to break it in 2604, when the General Samuel Macau tried to stage a coup d'etat, only to be executed alongside Admiral Wibika by the palace guard and President Richard. Richard would die in 2619, leaving the Republic to his daughter Amanda. But before Amanda could bring in sweeping political reform and hold open elections, she was assassinated too in 2620. It was Amanda's brother then, Jeffrey, who held office only long enough to institute free elections and then abdicate to Amanda's daughter, Selanta. Up to her 19th birthday, Selanta's government was ran by a trio of protectors, one Jimmy Seaver, Honor Chan, and George Wong, who then died and was replaced by Honofra Marcus within months of taking the position. Although each of the three protectors plotted to overthrow Salanta, she averted any problems by gifting the three men with Canopian, Terran, and Adrian ambassadorships. Salanta also proved her cunning with her handling of her cousin, Tadeo Amaris. Unfortunately stricken with cancer, Salanta ruled from the sickbed, allowing her cousin Tadeo to rule as a regent in a smooth transition of government. Tadeo rebuilt the Republican army, but in doing that he began to posture himself against the Lyran Commonwealth. At the behest of the Archon of the time, the Star League would hold massive military games on the Republican border on Black Earth. In response, Salanta secretly informed the Star League High Council Tadeo didn't have the authority to practice his military adventurism. The incident broke faith in Tadeo domestically making it impossible for him to stage a coup, at the same time strengthening the position of the Republic military. When Salanta finally died of cancer in 2687, the Republic faced its bloodiest transition yet. Salanta's successor, her son, Bertram Amaris, was killed only moments before taking the oath of office, by his cousin nonetheless, Gregor Seaver. 
the brother of Gregor, one Carl Seaver, in shock at events unfolding before him, also found himself attacked. Carl was able to defend himself and kill his brother, but lost an arm in the process. Carl turned into a paranoid man, and not harboring any political ambition, abdicated for his niece, the granddaughter of Salanta Amaris, Cynthia. Carl Seaver lived out the rest of his life in a Buddhist monastery on the world of Dörf. Cynthia, though, devoted herself to statecraft. At the age of 40, in 2716, Cynthia married the inner sphere industrialist Stefan Gorienko. The marriage was one of necessity. Cynthia wanted an heir in order to prevent another bloody succession. And so, the infamous Stefan Amaris, aka Discount Horus Lupercal, was born in 2717. When Hector Rowe founded the Rimworld Republic, the world of Apollo possessed a very small population. Only the militants of Rowe and the slaves taken prisoner were present. Rowe dealt with this situation with pragmatism. Anyone with any technical skill was allowed to practice a trade, and the female slaves could gain social status by marrying. Everyone else was consigned to labor or slavery. In spite of this very small population, Apollo would thrive. Commerce was also conducted in a pragmatic manner. Goods, services, and slaves were the currency of the Republic. The granddaughter of Hector Rowe, Arabella, would later emancipate the slaves altogether. The strife of the Exodus era inner sphere would quickly alleviate the population problem, though. The Republic expanded as a flood of immigrants sought refuge there. In 2376, the Stuart, Brannigan, Sterling, and McGregor clans joined the Republic and settled the world of Somerset. Skilled refugees of the Russell Hague Principality, fleeing the brutality of the coordinator Shiro Kurita of the Joconis Combine, settled the cold worlds of Steelton, Toland, Wotan, and Bensinger. Refugees out of the Sarna supremacy and the Capellan hegemony also sought refuge in the Republic settling the worlds of Star's End, Anywhere, and Erewhon. With the origins of many worlds a result of refugee immigration, the Republic developed a fiercely independent attitude towards the inner sphere. The great weakness of the Republic was the lack of natural resources, especially compared to the resource-heavy colonies settled in the Torian Concordat. However, immigration and the reforms of Arabella Rowe gave the Republic a surplus of skilled, inexpensive labor with a moderate standard of living, a resource which the Republic utilized to the fullest. Despite the end of the Amaris line, the Rimworld's Republic might have actually survived. Unfortunately, the loss of the core of the Republic to the annexation by the Lyran Commonwealth, as well as the power vacuum left by the death of the Amaris dynasty and the Rimworld's military, meant that the remaining independent worlds Literally more than 24 systems of them were left to fend for themselves. Multiple banded kingdoms arose in the vacuum of the collapse of the Republic, financed by privateering and mercenary deals. Whatever was left persisted as periphery independence or simply disappeared. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Rimworld's Republic and their early history for today. Had it not been for Stefan Amaris though, this state might have actually survived and still be one of the most powerful periphery states in existence. But then again, the Star League would have not shattered then, the Exodus wouldn't have happened, and the Succession Wars wouldn't have broken out. So, without Stefan Amaris, who knows what could have happened? What about you though? What are your thoughts about this Republic? Even though it is an extinct state, is it among your favorite Battletech factions? Do share any thoughts or questions on them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the like, share, and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot and have a healthy day. This is GDN signing out.